With the new update that Notion just released, we thought it would be interesting to talk about the top 10 features we would still like to see from Notion in the future. We love using Notion, the versatility, creativity, and the overall concept of creating your own template and tools through it is amazing. That being said, there are some wishlist features that we really hope Notion implements in upcoming updates. If you find this video helpful or interesting, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. So let's dive right in. The first feature we wanted to talk about is offline mode and we feel like this is one of the most requested features for Notion because if we just see this page for example when we are on the airplane or somewhere with really low signal it can really be a huge hinder on work and it's just difficult to take notes when it only works on online mode although we do sort of understand at the same time that the fact that it's online is also one of its strengths because it can really allow you to collaborate in real time and so on. So we hope that this will be an option in the future that we can also access certain pages offline and be able to continue taking notes or doing work in Notion. So the next feature that we've seen requested many times and one that we'd also really love from Notion would be charts and graphs. So just being able to see your database in a chart or a graph inside of Notion natively would just be so amazing. And we think that it would really look great with Notion's colors as well. So at the moment, if you want to put a chart or a graph, you do need to go to sort of a third party in order to do this. So for example, we've also made a video on this, but you could go to chart base and put your database inside here and create your graph and then get an embed link like this, copy it. And then you could go back to your Notion page and then embed it. And that's one way to get a chart or a graph. And it does work, but this one, for example, does cost something if you want to have more than one chart. So being able to do that within Notion would just be such a game changer. So the next thing that we would love to see from Notion would be flexible calculations, especially inside of table view databases. So what this means is, for example, if we create a database slash database inline, and we have a table view database like this, let's say that we are calculating prices. So we could put a number property here and we could choose number format US dollars. And let's just input some numbers here. And then let's say that we want to calculate. So if we calculate so that we wanted to see the sum, we could do that like this right now. But what we would love is that if we could somehow display this information outside of this table view database in some way, either just by linking this or being able to just show a total, that would be really amazing because in the sense that if we used a spreadsheet or something, we could easily do sums in another location in the page. So that would just be really nice uh, feature for us to have. So for example, you could have something like total and then you could somehow link this sum over here. And the other thing would be, for example, if you had different cells, so if there was some kind of spreadsheet option, that would be really nice as well, because I know that some people have had to use spreadsheets instead of Notion because it just doesn't do what they really want, which would be to calculate certain cells and so on. So this would just be something that probably is quite difficult to implement on Notion's side, but that we would really appreciate. So this next feature that we would really like to have is related to a recent update, which is that Notion released its own calendar app. And one of the things that's really big that is sort of missing for us is that you cannot access this calendar directly in your workspace. So if we open the calendar app, you'll see here, this is our calendar app here. And it's kind of a master calendar, including our Google calendar events. And there's really no way to add this into our Notion workspace. So if we did slash, for example, calendar view like this, we can't really choose anything here that's related to this calendar app. So you have to have both apps in order to use the calendar app. So that's something that we really hope will come soon. The next feature we'd like to cover is the recurring database template options. So 
One of the weaknesses of using Notion as a calendar is that you cannot really populate your calendar in advance for weekly, daily events, and so on. So, what we mean is if we have slash calendar and we have a calendar view database, we do plus new database, new calendar. And let's say that we want to have a recurring database template for a meeting that happens every week. And we've added it to this blue part here and we can click these three dots. At the moment, we can turn on repeat to be, for example, every week and choose a weekday. But the problem is that it creates it at this certain time. So you can't just populate your entire calendars with database template that is occurring weekly. So you just have to wait until the time that it comes and then it's going to pop up. So this can be a bit confusing if you're trying to set a schedule, for example. And that's why many people might go to Google Calendar. And actually, you can now do that with the new Notion Calendar app. So if you have a Google Calendar entry, then you are able to set it as repeat like this, for example which is quite useful, but again, it doesn't really connect with your Notion workspace, so it can be a little bit limiting. So this next feature that we would like from Notion is actually relating to the calendar app that we just mentioned, but specific to this app. So if you don't have this yet, be sure to download it and try it out. But one of the biggest problems we've seen in this is that it's nice that you can integrate it with your databases inside the calendar, but it's not really possible to actually see the different calendar filter names. So what this means is that if we click the meeting tracker calendar, we're actually only seeing work meetings right now, and it's filtered by work meeting. If we go to this other calendar that we have, it's actually showing us uh, personal meetings. But the problem is that, for example, we don't know which one is which. So it both says meeting tracker calendar. So we don't know which one is the one with a certain filter so that it just retains the database name. And that can be quite confusing. So we hope that Notion fixes this. And the other two things would be that at the moment, this calendar app doesn't work for Android phones and it's not possible to integrate it with iCal. So those have been some issues that people have been talking about, but we're really positive that they are working on this and it will be there soon. So this next feature is about Notion's rollup. So let's actually make two databases to show you what this means. So if we type slash database inline, we can make database one and below it we'll make another one database two and in order to do a rollup we do need to have a relation so we're going to add a relation property here relating it to database two and we'll show it on database two and add relation and let's go ahead and add some items to database two so task one task two and we'll add some tags, tag one, tag two, for example. And then we will add this one here like this. So this is task one. And let's say that now we want to add a roll up. So for that, we're gonna press the plus sign, roll up. And here is where we hope to see some improvements. So if we see here the relation, we can select that it's database two. And once you select that, you can choose what property you want to use for the rollup. So let's say that we wanted to only see a certain kind of tag, then we cannot add filters directly into the rollup. So ideally it would be nice, for example, if we had tag two as well here, but in this rollup, we only want to see tag one. So that's not exactly possible right now. So if we go to the property, we can only choose the property and the calculate is only these options. So maybe a few more options here would be nice or just to have some filters for this. And on top of that, it is possible to do it through formulas at the moment, but it's just a little more complicated, especially for beginners. So rollup is just an easier solution, but it's just a bit more limiting. 
So this next feature is about sharing specific database views. So at the moment, if we had a table view database, for example, and we do plus new database, and this would be database one. And let's say that we have two views, view one, and we'll duplicate this and create a view two. And let's say that view two actually has a filter on it. So let's say that it's only showing tag one. So you could filter the tags by tag one, say for everyone. So you only see entry one like this, but view two, we see entry one, entry two, and entry three. So view one shows all of these and view two only shows this one. So in the case that you only wanted to share this view to someone, it would be very difficult to do that because they need to have access to everything in order to be able to see this view. So a possibility to share only one database view would be really nice and very useful as well. So that's something that we would hope for in the future. So this next feature is about the mobile view. And at the moment we have to create a page so that it's more mobile friendly. And one of the reasons is because in Notion, it does sort of push all of your content together into one column. So if you have multiple columns that is meant for desktop view, like this digital journal, we tend to make a mobile view version by creating a page that's very similar, but in a single column style. And we wish that Notion would have a way so that they could sort of make it in a way that we don't have to edit it and create a mobile view page, but that it was kind of inside already that if you open it in mobile, it already looks really good. So that would be a feature that we would really like. Of course, I'm sure that it's quite difficult to add that. And on top of that, some of our properties don't show up in mobile view. So we've had to also be careful of that. And we really don't know which properties are not gonna show up. And it does seem like it's mostly like the progress bar and things like that don't show up in the mobile view. The next wishlist item feature would be improved relation property. So what this means is if we have a database and let's say that this is database one and this is going to be database two and we are going to add a relation property to database two. And now let's say that we have entry one, entry two, entry three. So if we connect this to these entries or we are trying to connect them, there's no real rule that we can place in terms of how they show these relation options. So ideally, it would be nice if we could somehow alphabetize this or order it by date and so on. So if there was more of a filter option inside of this relation linking system here, that would be really amazing so that we don't get lost trying to look for the correct entry inside of database two. And this is especially relevant if you have a bunch of entries in your database and it's just really hard to find or you don't even know what you're really looking for. So we hope that this could be something that they also add in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Which of these features do you relate with? Do you have any other wishlist features that you wish Notion had? If you have any questions or comments about what we talked about in this video, feel free to let us know and we hope to see you in the next one.